Over the past 20 years of televised wrestling, authority figures have been running rampant. Either they are in 100% support of the good guy, or they are looking to place a legitimate screw job on a wrestler or wrestlers. At points, administrative leaders consume the majority of what you see on wrestling programming. To be fair, they are completely passe. However, in the day of age where there are 20 different people acting as the boss, there was a time, yes, there was a time, where one man broke the mold. He was firm, but fair. He didn't appear much, but when he did, he made an impact. He was innovative, but upholding of old school traditions. There was no one like him, and hasn't been since. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about the esteemed president of the World Wrestling Federation, Jack Tunney. As an old school wrestling fan, I always appreciated the Jack Tunney character. Despite his few and far televised appearances, a lot of wrestling fans during the Rock and Wrestling Connection appreciated him. He was admired and remembered fondly. Surely, with some of the names that have been thrown into the WWE Hall of Fame over the years, surely President Tunney would be a shoe-in as the standard bearer for what a power figure should look like. However, when it came to the WWE Hall of Fame, he was a non-issue. I'm disgusted. And of course, when I'm disgusted, I take notice of an unfair situation. People have been clamoring for the respect that President Jack Tunney deserved, a spot in the Hall of Fame. Well, where there is an issue, I am here to solve it. If Jack Tunney was not going to gain the immortalization of the Hall of Fame by the number one wrestling company in the world, then I was going to show my respect for this man and do it the hard way, naturally. And not only that, I, I, I need content. <laughs> So, there you go on that. Thus, through my Hardway HQ podcasting network, I'm going to start my own Hall of Fame. And not only that, I'm going to induct people who have never gotten the proper appreciation they've ever deserved. Therefore, and unequivocally, I can't say it like Jack Tunney would, but unequivocally, unequivocally, I can't even say it. <laughs> Jack Tunney had a way with words. So, without further ado, sit back, relax, and listen to the Hardway HQ Podcasting Network, courtesy of the JohnHarder.com, as I proudly present to you the Hardway HQ Hall of Fame induction of former WWF President, the distinguished and esteemed Jack Tunney. Man, I love that music, man. <laughs> that is the... Uh... The official, the official song brought to you by FreePlayMusic.com for the gold. That's the name of it, and we're gonna use it as the Hardway HQ Hall of Fame theme song for every time someone's inducted. And I'm very excited for it. For it, and I think a lot of people are believing this might be a joke, some sort of uh, game that I like to play. When things don't go my way, I decide to do something crazy and go just a shade out of left field, and uh. Get notoriety for it. Well, this is I'm I'm taking this as serious as possible. I mean, and this is the Hardway HQ Hall of Fame. It's for people I appreciate, and it's not just gonna be wrestling related guys. But this is the start. We're gonna see if we get any notoriety for it, and we're gonna see if we can do something fun. So without further ado, we're gonna kick things off. And now, now before Jack Tunney became president of the World Wrestling Federation in the summer of 1984, this man was a this man learned from the best that his uncle, his uncle Frank Tunney, and his father, John Tunney, um, <clears throat> they they ran, they ran uh, this little ter- this little promotion company in Canada called the Queensbury Athletic Club, and basically it was based out of Toronto. And if you if you notice about these Canadian territories, you had Montreal, which was the Rougeaus, you had the Calgary region, the Alberta region, which was Stu, Stu Hart, you know, uh, everyone's everyone's favorite Canadian here on the Hardwood Podcast, and Toronto was uh, was the Tunnies, John and Frank Tunney, and 
and these guys ran it. And alongside, believe it or not, Toots Mont, who actually has a major play in New York pro wrestling. So the Tunnies come, are like second generation. Jack Tunney was second generation promoter. And uh, he was running the Queensbury Athletic Club, uh, Frank Tunney. And Jack was learning under under his uncle. Once his father died at the age of 32, sadly. God rest his soul. Once Frank Tunney passed away in 1983, Jack took over completely alongside his cousin Eddie. And began running, not the Queensbury Athletic Club, but it became Maple Leaf Wrestling. And this became a huge deal. I mean, Toronto was lucky they had the CNE Stadium. Yes, the same place that had 70,000 fans for the big event in Toronto. That infamous WWE uh, show where it made evented Paul Orndorff and Hogan. And it's actually on the WWE Network under the uh, pay-per-view shows. That's how big that show was. So obviously Jack Tunney did a lot for that. With, with that with that particular venue and the entire Canadian region. And Jack Tunney was the main Canadian promoter. People would always go to Jack Tunney if they wanted a big venue in Toronto, set up a deal. Uh, he was involved with the NWA until 1984. <laughs> Excuse me. And Tunney switched allegiances on because he saw how big McMahon was, Mr. McMahon was starting to get. And he switched over and started promoting WWF shows instead of NWA. And that was the big curve in Canada of getting sports entertainment up top to the uh, to the northern to the northern the northern country, uh, Mexico the North, as LSG would like to call it. But obviously, Jack Tunney started running, you know, helping Mitch McMahon run WF shows in Canada, and he was the main Canadian promoter. And because of his allegiance change and helping WF make more money at that time period in in, in Canada. Vince McMahon decided to give Jack Tunney an on-air role as World Wrestling Federation president. Uh, Jack Tunney, um, obviously Vince McMahon ran the entire show, but on television, Jack Tunney was the figurehead of the company. And Jack Tunney actually took over for a gentleman who represented New Japan Pro Wrestling at the time. His name was Hizashi Shinma, who ran it for eight years. And believe it or not, Shinma actually um, helped promote Antonio Inuki's uh, secret WWF title run when he beat Bob Backlund in 79. So, you know, there's a little bit of history there. He ran out, Shinmai ran it for eight years, uh, six years from 78 to 84. Jack Tunney took over right in the middle of the rock and wrestling connection. And therefore you had yourself a major figurehead in the world of pro wrestling. And, and this is where it started, where everyone, or every wrestling company started having their own on-air authority figures. And it was because of the WWF's uh, portrayal of Jack Tunney. And, and people make fun of Jack Tunney in the long run of things. You know, but but my opinion is this. Jack Tunney, he was a perfect figurehead. He wasn't flamboyant. He wasn't flashy. He was straight to the point. He used big words like other presidents and CEOs of companies used. And he worked perfectly. And I feel like no one's been able to touch what Jack Tunney has done on WWF television through the 80s and 90s and early 90s. So, here's a little bit of backstory on Jack Tunney. He, uh, Canadian wrestler motor, second generation, and he became WF president in 1984. And we're going to be playing clips throughout this entire episode of uh, special Jack Tunney moments, memories you might remember, memories you might not. And this one is uh, his first big on-air decision since becoming president in 1984. And it involved Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant, obviously, a legend, 74520 from Grenoble in the French Alps. Jack Tunney had to make a decision. Andre the Giant was taking time away from TV. He was actually uh, going to Japan to do a tour, but he's also suffering from severe injuries. So instead of just taking him off and saying the big man was injured, Jack Tunney suspended Andre the Giant. And Bobby the Brain Heenan <laughs> was convinced that Andre was a re mass wrestler in the giant machine. In that time period, machines were running wrestling. So Bobby Bobby the Brain was convinced that Andre the Giant was giant machine. Well, Jack Tunney had to handle business. In this first clip, uh, we're going to check this thing out here. Andre, suspended by Jack Tunney. Check this out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the president of the World Wrestling Federation, Mr. Jack Tunney. 
And Mr. Tunney, I understand that you have a clarification on the suspension of Andre the Giant. Yes, let me just explain something, Kenny. The uh, suspending Andre the Giant was one of the worst things I had to do uh, as president of the WWF. However, I had no choice. He failed to appear for a couple of matches that he had contracted for. Also, he failed to appear for the hearing, which I really can't understand because Andre is uh, not that type of man. Very dependable man, great athlete. Obviously something unusual on the part of the giant. Well, this is what I can't, uh, it doesn't make any sense really because he, he's just not like that. Mr. President, may I congratulate you on your decision? You have made my day, you've made my life. You talk about Andre the Giant, how he, an honorable man. I told you about him. You should have listened to me. You people should have listened to me. He chickened out. He backed out. Didn't even have the, the, the gumption to show up for a hearing. And now he's back, or he's trying to come back with somebody else as a partner, calling himself the giant machine, the super machines as partner. You know it. I know it. We all know it. That is Andre the Giant. The Japanese wrestlers, they have Japanese oh. passports. It's, uh, uh, it could be uh, Giant Baba. Mr. President, please don't make yourself look bad in front of the people. That's Andre the Giant. I know it. The man speaks like Andre the Giant. There's no Japanese wrestler seven foot five. You know that and I know it. Thirty of them aren't seven feet five. Mr. Heenan, if you can prove that that's Andre the Giant, I'll suspend him for life. You mean if those masks come off, you will suspend him for life? Absolutely. Well, those masks will come off, I guarantee you. He shows one foot on the soil. He shows one face around this ring or any place. Those masks are coming off, and I can guarantee that because I'm the brain. Just a moment. Control yeah. yourself. You could be suspended also. <laughs> hey, pal, don't worry about me. I'm clean. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Well, obviously, good little back and forth between Jack Tunney and Bobby the Brain. Well, Andre did get his suspension overturned, but listen to Jack Tunney as he discusses who was at the meeting when Andre was reinstated. Check this out. And maybe this will turn a little bit of the brain, when, not Heenan, <laughs> but your brain when it comes to issues that happened late 86, early 87. Listen to this. Earlier on, we had a chance to corner President Jack Tunney tried to get him to confirm Andre's reinstatement. Yes, it's true, and I'm very happy that Andre the Giant has been reinstated in the World Wrestling Federation. I know you're all interested in what went on at the reinstatement hearing. All I can tell you at this time is that Andre was a no-show and Bobby Heenan was there. Uh-huh, you see? There you go, ladies and gentlemen. The seeds were planted right there without Jack Tunney even knowing it. Andre the Giant and Bobby the Brain Heenan's union started right there on the lead to WrestleMania 3. Now, speaking of WrestleMania 3, who was the one that made the big announcement where the biggest WrestleMania of all time took place? Jack Tunney did. He let Craig DeGeorge, yeah, Craig DeGeorge, that gentleman, um the precursor to what Eric Bischoff was in WCW in the early 90s as an interviewer and a ring and announcer, Craig DeGeorge gets the inside, the inside scoop on where WrestleMania 3 was going to be held thanks to the president, Jack Tunney. All right, Gorilla Matsu, thank you very much. WrestleMania 3 just around the corner. We've heard the speculation as to where it would be held from places all over the world. But to tell us now, Mr. Jack Tunney, president of the WWF, and Mr. Tunney, the big announcement. Thank you very much, Craig. First of all, I'd like to thank the, the sports facilities around the world for their interest in hosting WrestleMania 3. Uh, Wembley Stadium in England, Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, Madison mm. Square Garden in New York. However, the uh, site that has been chosen, after a lot of thought, yeah. is the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. That is a tremendously big arena, seating over, I believe, 90,000 people. This will be the biggest wrestling event uh, to be viewed by an audience uh, in the history of wrestling. The Silver Dome it is, Detroit, Michigan. It's coming up March 29th. WrestleMania 3, bigger, better, better. You see, that's what I love about President Jack Tunney. When he made a major announcement, he was short and precise, straight to the point. And that's one thing about Jack Tunney that has him heads and heels above other authority figures when it came to the world of professional wrestling. 
is that he didn't mince words. He straight up said what needed to be said. And what he said, WrestleMania 3, Pontiac Silverdome, 93,000 strong, took pl- came to that event and saw Jack Tunney's masterpiece brought to the world. And the main event for that show was for the World Wrestling Federation Championship champion Hulk Hogan against the aforementioned Andre the Giant, managed by Bobby the Brain Heenan. Yes, the seeds were planted earlier by Jack Tunney without anyone else realizing it. And Andre is now managed by Bobby the Brain Heenan. And one of the requests for this main event, since this was the biggest wrestling main event of all time, this was the make or break for WrestleMania. It was the make or break for the World Wrestling Federation. Bobby the Brain Heenan stated that the World Wrestling Federation Championship belt that Hulk Hogan wore was too small. It, he needed a belt to fit a giant of a man. And what Bobby the Brain Heenan wanted, he wanted a custom-made belt to fit Andre the Giant's waist if he had won the World Wrestling Federation Championship at the Pontiac Silverdome. Well, I found the audio, and you're going to check this out. Picture a giant championship custom-made for Andre the Giant. And yes, Jack Tunney, man of his word, lives up to Bobby the Brain's requests. Listen to this. A few days before WrestleMania three. On WWF Superstars. And now, without further ado, I'd like to bring out the president of the WWF, Jack Tunney, please. Hello, Mr. Tunney. Hello, how are you? Good, good. You got a little present for me. Uh, not that you don't deserve it, however, this is a little different. What have we got? I've been charged with getting a new world championship belt. At Bobby Heenan's insistence. Now, this is large enough to fit Andre the Giant, if necessary. Let me show it to you. It's beautiful. Let's get that sucker off there. Let's. Ha ha! Ha ha! That's a big sucker there, huh? That's a giant belt, for sure. What? Look, not, he's the little, little, little trim, is he? Not the, you know. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I know one thing for sure. Well, hi, Weasel. I mean, Mr. Heenan. You finally done something right. You finally have done something that I've asked for. And I want all you people all over the world to get used to a certain sight because you're going to be seeing a lot of this. You're going to be seeing the new next heavyweight champion of the world, Andre the Giant. Wait. Wait a second. The what? I said this one fit. It doesn't fit. Well, you're an awfully big man, but I want to just, yeah, I've never done this before. So the belt might not have fit. But Jack Tunney tried. I mean, Andre the Giant was a giant of a man, like Bobby the Brain Heenan stated several times over. The belt was custom made. It just barely fit. It was a little snug. Custom made belt. There you go. Andre the Giant had that belt custom made. He didn't win, however. Hulk Hogan did a WrestleMania 3, the biggest show of the year. But that's not here nor there. Now... You've heard a lot of main event stuff involving Andre the Giant, Bobby Heenan, and Hulk Hogan. You know, but Jack Tunney also interacted with the rest of the roster, in particular, his referees, his staff. And one man Jack Tunney did not like and was stuck in his craw was the biased official of the Rule Breakers, Danny Davis. Danny Davis was the reason why Tito Santana lost the Intercontinental Championship in the Boston Garden in February of 1986. He is also the reason why the Hart Foundation won the World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Championships from the British Bulldogs in 1987. With a fast count on both, Savage got away with the brass knucks. Well, Jack Tunney heard and saw Danny Davis illegally utilize his refereeing status to to all to basically make an alternate universe for
for where the rule breakers would always come out on top. Well, Jack Tunney saw dangerous Danny Davis and attempted to make him apologize for his actions. Now, check out the disrespect Danny Davis shows Jack Tunney here. Check this out. Referee Danny Davis has a statement to make to us at this time. Mr. Davis, you do have a statement to make to us. To all those people who think that I owe them an apology for the way I officiate, well, I'm sorry, even though I don't mean it. Well, you see, Danny Davis could have gotten off with a slap on the wrist, but instead, he didn't mean his apology. And he went still with his rule-breaking ways, did what he wanted as a referee. Well, Jack Tunney had enough, went out to the ring on a live wrestling challenge and said Danny Davis is suspended for life plus 10 years. Danny Davis, barred from being a a referee, turned into a wrestler, actually won a six-man tag at WrestleMania 3 alongside the Hart Foundation with their manager, Jimmy Hart, defeating... Tito Santana and the British Bulldogs by uh, sneaky ways. Danny Davis was truly dangerous. And ultimately, he was on probation, allowed to referee once again in 1989. He was on probation for a long time, and then he became a full-time official, yet again under the eye of Jack Tunney's uh, administration. Now, Jack Tunney, after all these big announcements he had in the uh, early 87. He took it some time away. I mean, he stepped away, just focused on the business at hand of making the World Wrestling Federation bigger and better than what it was at the WrestleMania 3. So much big stuff happening. Well, in 88, he had to get himself personally involved. I mean, first things first, he had to suspend uh, the Islanders, who were managed by Bobby the Brain Heenan. Heenan and Tony always had a bad relationship. Well, needless to say... The Islanders kidnapped the British Bulldog's mascot, Matilda, that cute little bulldog, angry, and uh, rumor has it fed with beer, according to the Dynamite Kid book, just saying. Matilda was kidnapped, the Islanders took her, feared that they were going to turn that dog into pepper steak, or what the big boss man did to Al Snow's pepper. Uh, Approximately 10 years later, Jack Tunney suspended the Islanders and refused to allow them back in the World Wrestling Federation until the dog was returned. Dog return, ding, dang, dong. But that wasn't the big thing Jack Tunney had to worry about. He had to worry about what the Million Dollar Man utilized to swerve the entire WWF fan base in 1988. Andre the Giant got his long-awaited return match at the World Wrestling Federation Championship against Hulk Hogan on the February 5th, 1988 main event held on NBC, which I believe was the largest wrestling audience for a wrestling show at that time period. I believe 33 million people tuned in for the return match between Andre and Hogan. Andre the Giant won the World Wrestling Federation Championship due to twin magic. The wrong Hebner was the referee. The other one was tied up, knocked out backstage, and that allowed Hulk Hogan to lose the championship, especially when he had the shoulder up. And Andre the Giant did what he said he was going to do once he won the title. He was going to hand it off to the Million Dollar Man who bought himself the World Wrestling Federation Championship. Now, although DiBiase successfully wore that belt for one house show at the Boston Garden in in Boston, Massachusetts, Jack Tunney did not allow that crap to happen. Not on his dime. Not on his time. Jack Tunney laid down the law and basically re refixed everything and made everything right in one fell swoop when it came to the World Wrestling Federation Championship. Jack Tunney setting everything up the way it needs to be. We're starting from the very beginning and we're heading towards WrestleMania 4. February 5th, 1988 will go down in World Wrestling Federation history as a day of infamy. Never before has there been such controversy to surround a World Wrestling Federation championship match. Despite having viewed time and again videotapes of the Hogan-Andre match, the decision of the referee is, as always, unfortunately final. Therefore, Hulk Hogan is not the World Wrestling Federation champion, However, it clearly states in the rule book that in order for a wrestler to be deemed a champion, he must either pin the reigning title holder or make him submit. 
That is the only way a wrestler can become champion. Therefore, unequivocally, I can state that Ted DiBiase is also not the World Wrestling Federation champion. Furthermore, it also clearly states in the rule book that a reigning champion may at any time in his tenure end his reign by publicly surrendering the title, which is exactly what happened when Andre the Giant presented the championship belt to Ted DiBiase. Therefore, Andre is also not the champion either. It is my decision that to be fair to the last two reigning champions of record, Hogan and Andre, and to furthermore be fair with the number one contenders who would have faced either Andre or Hogan as champion, I now declare the title vacant. And this vacancy to be filled on March 27th of this year during WrestleMania 4 in the form of the first ever World Wrestling Federation Championship Tournament. In this championship tournament, the last two title holders of record, Hogan and Andre, will justifiably be given a bye for the first round of competition. They will not compete in the first round, but will face each other in the opening of the second round of the tournament. The pairings have been completed for the first round of the competition, and they include Jake the Snake Roberts meeting Ravishing Rick Rude, Don the Rock Morocco taking on Dino Bravo, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat will wrestle Greg the Hammer Valentine, Randy Macho Man Savage goes against the natural Butch Reed, Bam Bam Bigelow against the One Man Gang, and Hacksaw Jim Duggan will take on the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. It is my sincere wish that all of the participating wrestlers in this historic tournament, and more importantly, all of the fans of the World Wrestling Federation, construe my decision as the only just and fair way to determine who will be the new undisputed World Wrestling Federation champion. Thank you. You know, I love that music that they're playing to close out the segment. Jack Tunney laying down the law like it needed to have been done. WrestleMania 4, total success in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Coincidentally, I'm shocked knowing it was an AC. King Kong Bundy didn't have a match in it, but he was out of the company by then. He would have had the hometown hero response, just personal opinion. However, needless as it may be, the tournament announced Jack Tunney showing his his true, his true authority as World Wrestling Federation president, making this tournament happen for WrestleMania 4, and a total success it was, and in the end, Macho Man Randy Savage was the undisputed World Wrestling Federation champion. And Macho Man did a phenomenal job as champion. And trust me when I tell you this, the Macho Man and Jack Tunney had a great business relationship, but one man in particular felt there was politics being played when it came to the Macho Man, Miss Elizabeth, and the World Wrestling Federation Championship. And that man who proclaimed that was Bad News Brown. And uh, Jaka, you know, the, the Samoan warrior Jaka, he, the Team Pazuzu representative, he's a devastating uh, co cooperator, that whole shebang. He appreciates this because I think he's uh, one of his heroes growing up, believe it or not, Jaka, was Bad News Brown. That's why the half of his head is shaved. And Bad News Brown, a true lone wolf, a loner, stuck to his guns and truly believed in his heart that the Macho Man was playing politics with the World Wrestling Federation Championship and using Elizabeth as the pawn. Now on Brother Love Show, the irrehensible preacher at that time, the televangelist, man who made money off believers, the million dollar man definitely believed in Brother Love and his spiel. Brother Love believed Jack Tunney was a abuse of power authority figure as well as Bad News Brown did. Here is the full clip in in total of Bad News Brown and Jack Tunney on the barbershop. And for the only time, at least 
During the 80s, Jack Tunney was physically was physically assaulted at the hands of Bad News Brown. Just listen to this and picture what's going on. And also enjoy uh, the Vince McMahon, Jesse the Body commentary tandem throughout this segment. Sit back, McMahon. No, sit back and relax. You can't relax when this guy's around. He irritates me. Oh, look at that. He's an athlete. <laughs> Surprised he made it up on that one and a half foot leap there. Got the biggest silver tongue out there now. He's come out here on the Brother Love Show. And Big Moore come out here and chase me up. Time and time again, the Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, Kogan, man, come out and chase Brother Love up. Now, El President of the World Wrestling Federation. Sensitive man, that tongue oh is. Oh my it? goodness, I love it. Well, that is all that you have done since you have been president of the World Wrestling Federation. Absolutely nothing. I'll concur with that. Wait a minute, you made you just referee at SummerSlam. Here's a man. Here's a man who does something. Minute. the president of the WWF. For the past five months, I've been sending letters to your office. I've been calling you on the telephone. I've been sending messages to your country club, private I may add, and I have not got no response. So here I am to ask you in front of all these beer belly sharecroppers and all the millions of spineless cockroaches who will be watching this throughout the world. I want to know one thing and one thing. Why am I not the number one contender in the WWF? I defeated everybody that they put in front of me. I won the battle royal in the WrestleMania. I want to know why. Why are you protecting that so-called spineless champion? Macho Man Savage. Got a point. That's wrong. I'm not protecting anyone. That's wrong, huh? Well, ever since Macho Man Savage, the so-called world champ, has become the world champ, I notice, I understand that you have a big 35-room mansion in Beverly Hills. Ooh. You have a big 200-foot yacht down in Florida, and you ride around in a brand new Rolls Royce limousine. Now, I want to know, is he giving you a percentage of his contract? Is there some kind of contract between you going, what you and him? I hey, Tony used to right drive now. the Chevy Chevette. He's got a point. He has no point at all, obviously. Well, then you're going to tell me that there's no contract between you and Macho Man Savage? No. Tony's been above reproach for years, and you know that. And why Brother did you Lord, question me making you something. me a rap? Sometimes my head is a little thick, and it finally dawned on me what's going on. It has nothing to do with Randy Macho Man Savage. It has nothing to do with him whatsoever. I finally figured out what it's all about. It's that Elizabeth, isn't it? It's that Elizabeth. She's doing favors for you, huh? Oh my goodness. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are to speak to me in that fashion? Let me tell you Wait a minute. Let me what tell what you is he something. doing? Can you believe Let this? Let me tell you something, you He's making a point. two-legged. Brett, nobody, I don't care if you are the president of the WWF. I don't care if you're the president of the Teamsters Unit. I couldn't care if you're the president of the United States or the Queen of England. Nobody, but nobody 
puts their hands on bad news. And if you do it again, I'll beat all the ugliness off you. My dad's gonna pay for that. I'm sure something will be done about this incident. Who's going to do it, Tommy? Probably. Unbelievable. Bad News Brown laid his hand on Jack Tunney for suggesting the president was doing favors. Brother love and knowing is all hell. Never got his comeuppance. Actually, he did in 1991, but that's not here nor there. Jack Tunney gave Bad News Brown what he wanted. He wanted a title shot. He got it. And Macho Man layeth the smack down on the behind of the man from Harlem, New York, Bad News Brown. No, obviously also around this time. Jack Tunney had some major dealings in Canada to set through. And WrestleMania 6, the big rumors were there were all these places that were gonna that was gonna take place at. Wembley Stadium in beautiful London, England. The Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum in beautiful Los Angeles, California. And a lot of people were saying that the Coliseum was in the whole WrestleMania 6. Well, instead, Jack Tunney and his Canadian connections set it up for the brand new and beautiful Sky Dome in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. The Canadian roots of Mr. Tunney comes into play in full effect. Therefore, WrestleMania 6 goes over the border in Canada. And by the way, the Coliseum was going to be used for WrestleMania 7. Bomb threats towards slaughter slash low ticket sales happened uh, at the sports arena instead. And I will also add, Wembley Stadium got SummerSlam 92 sold out in an hour. 80,000 people. I mean, no matter where it would have been held for WrestleMania 6, it would have sold mass amount of tickets because the main event... Was huge and Jack Tunney in the in the winter of 1990, in the early year, early part of 1990, the beginning of the last decade before the millennium, Jack Tunney made the official announcement of the WrestleMania six main event, and no, Zeus was not involved. On April 1st in Toronto, Canada, at Sky Dome. The World Wrestling Federation will present WrestleMania. At this time, I am happy to announce the main event in which World Wrestling Federation Champion Hulk Hogan will meet the Intercontinental Champion, The Ultimate Warrior. Unquestionably, this is the greatest main event ever signed in World Wrestling Federation history. Never before have two men been so equally matched in popularity, in strength, and in stamina. However, the only question yet to be resolved is whose championship will be defended? That question will be answered at a later date. Thank you. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was the pinnacle of Jack Tunney's reign as WWF president. I mean, his Canadian roots came into full play for WrestleMania 6. Hogan, Warrior in the Sky Dome in Toronto, which is the end-all, be-all for Jack Tunney. I mean, all the stuff he did prior to his WWF presidency. Sky Dome in Toronto held an incredible WrestleMania 6 show. Some great matches on that card. The first ever mixed tag team match in wrestling history. You also had Jake the Snake versus the Million Dollar Man in a technical classic. Good Lord, I mean... Demolition three-peated for the first time ever as World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions. The last match of Andre the Giant at WrestleMania 6. And, and by the way, my personal favorite theme song of all time, Hunka Hunka Hunky Love, brought to you by Rhythm and Blues with DDP driving a pink Cadillac to the ring. Great stuff. But Hogan Warrior, the main event, the marquee, the two most popular wrestlers on the WWF roster at that time. The Ultimate Warrior comes out on top, avoids the leg drop, hits the big splash. One, two, three, new champion, the Ultimate Warrior. Now he's got two belts. The Intercontinental Championship 
and the World Wrestling Federation Championship. Both belts were on the line. However, once the Warrior claimed his singles wrestling dominance, holding both Intercontinental and World Championships, Jack Tunney had to make a decision. Was he going to defend both belts at once? Or was one going to go? Jack Tunney made this decision a couple weeks after WrestleMania 6. From the World Wrestling Federation magazine, this is Special Report. Hello everyone, I'm Lord Alfred Hayes. Following WrestleMania 6, the Ultimate Warrior now holds two titles, the World Wrestling Federation title and the Intercontinental title. In face of this unprecedented situation, the World Wrestling Federation President Jack Tunney had this statement to make. As of April 1st of this year, World Wrestling Federation history was made, with one man holding both the Intercontinental Championship and the World Wrestling Federation title. Since it is obvious that no one man can properly fulfill the requirements of both title defenses at the same time, the Ultimate Warrior has surrendered to me, as of this date, the Intercontinental Championship. I have declared the title vacant and furthermore have ordered that a tournament be held to determine who will become the new Intercontinental Champion. The pairings and participants in the tournament will be announced next week. Thank you. Well, there was an eight-man tournament that took place during Superstars and Wrestling Challenge through the spring, and in the end, Mr. Perfect became the new Intercontinental Champion, defeating Tito Santana in the finals on Superstars because of Mr. Perfect's perfect manager, Bobby the Brain Heenan. By the way, you know, I don't know if people also uh, really care about this. You know, I missed the way... Um, the special report and the update desk took place during television shows. I missed the old uh, superstar reports and all that stuff. I mean, that just made pro wrestling. I mean, it, it built more intrigue into the, the stories going on to the big shows. And and just knowing that the golden days of wrestling had that stuff, the simple but effective story creating, story making ability due to that television show, Superstars and Wrestling Challenge, That's it's missed to this day. And... <laughs> I long for those days sometimes, just like I know a lot of people long for the days of Jack Tunney and what he did as WWF president. So much he's he's accomplished under his reign. I mean, the ratings never higher. So much talent coming into the company. Uh, so many big time decisions falling on his plate and his plate only. Jack Tunney doing a phenomenal job as president. But then again, you also have to worry about two major situations that took place in the summer and fall of 1990. Now, during the summer. Demolition added a third member to their team, Crush. So Axe, Smash, and Crush were the World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions until SummerSlam when they lost the belts at the Hart Foundation. Yet somehow three Demolition members were always causing a ruckus, making a scene, and Jack Tunney had enough of it, and he made a decree during the fall of 1990 that after Survivor Series of that year, there were only to be two demolition members crush and smash axe was written out he was fired from the world wrestling federation only two members of demolition at a time jack tunney made a big announcement there and that's a big play knowing axe and smash were three-time world wrestling federation tag team champions in my opinion jack tunney also signaled the beginning of the end of demolition in the world wrestling federation due to that major announcement and there was one other major announcement something that has has really spun the World Wrestling Federation on its head at this time. The big boss man, law and, the law and order of the World Wrestling Federation, mind you, was getting ridiculed by Rick Rude and Bobby the Brain Heenan. Bobby the Brain always finds a way to keep coming up. Bobby the Brain Heenan was making fun of the big boss man's mother, Rick Rude as well. And I know that in pro wrestling, you could, you could hurt each other, you make each other bleed, you can use weapons on one another, you can cheat, you can low blow, you can throw powder in the eyes. But we stay away from your mama jokes and, and, and mother making fun of references. Jack Tunney felt the exact same way. Big Boss Man very offended. He made, in my opinion, the most impactful suspension of his time in the World Wrestling Federation. 
let's check this clip out from November of 1990. And Bobby the Brain Heenan got his tenfold. Now we take you to a very important statement by the World Wrestling Federation President, Mr. Jack Tunney. In light of the insidious and inflammatory remarks and unmentionable actions of Bobby the Brain Heenan and ravishing Rick Rude, it is my decision as World Wrestling Federation President to indefinitely suspend Rick Rude from active participation in the WWE. It is furthermore my decision to censor Bobby Heenan from any and all remarks directed toward the big boss man's mother. In addition, Bobby Heenan must fulfill all of Rick Rude's contractual single match obligations against the big boss man. Failure to comply with this order will result in a lifetime suspension. Ladies and gentlemen, there are not many things I tell you to worry about in your, your day jobs, your night jobs, in the wrestling profession, or in any line of work. If you make fun of somebody's mother, make sure you listen to what Jack Tunney just did to Ravishing Rick Rude, banning him from the World Wrestling Federation for seven years until his untimely death. You know, uh, Jack Tunney, he does not care who you are. No one's mother will be discussed inside of a World Wrestling Federation setting. And that's the bottom line. Bobby Heenan suffered for it also, that poor brain. <laughs> but before uh, before that, I mean, Jack, people respected Jack Tunney, but I feel like a lot of people feared him after that major declaration uh, on Ravishing Rick Rude and Bobby Heenan. So Tunney laid down for a little while, just stayed back, you know, enjoyed all the money he was making, enjoying all the high ratings the World Wrestling Federation was getting. Then... He pulled off his greatest act when it came to a on-the-fly pay-per-view making event. <laughs> Jack Tunney pulled this off within six days, not even seven, six days, less than a week. Survivor Series 1991, The Undertaker, with help from the Nature Boy Ric Flair, defeated Hulk Hogan for the World Wrestling Federation Championship by Tombstone via Ric Flair play steel chair. Knowing how it all went down, Jack Tunney needed to make a decision fast. And he did at the Survivor Series, mere moments after The Undertaker became champion. Check this out, courtesy of Primetime Wrestling. Check this clip of Jack Tunney laying down the law and making an event. Pay-per-view, in fact, six days after Survivor Series. Never in my life have I seen anything quite so disgusting, quite so despicable. As a matter of fact, President Jack Tunney, it's a, a, a travesty, and I want to know what you're going to do about it. Gene, notwithstanding what actually occurred here this evening in the Gravis Challenge, the referee's decision is final That's... and cannot be challenged by me. However, it is well within my authority to order a rematch at the earliest possible date. Therefore, it is my decision that The Undertaker meet Hulk Hogan in a rematch for the World Wrestling Federation title this Tuesday in Texas. Amen. And furthermore, I will physically be at ringside to ensure a fair and just outcome. Well, Jack Tunney was at ringside for that particular show. More on that in a few moments. Also at Tuesday in Texas, this Tuesday in Texas, excuse me, six days after Survivor Series, the macho man Randy Savage finally had his reinstatement after losing. After losing to the Ultimate Warrior in a career-ending match at WrestleMania 7, macho man's career was over as a professional wrestler. However, Jake the Snake Roberts went Beyond, went beyond what should have been done to one man. At SummerSlam 91, he ruined the the reception, the, re the wedding reception of Miss Elizabeth and the Macho Man at SummerSlam. Ruined it. Snakes all around. A King Cobra snake came out, popped out, bit the Macho Man. And then, three days before Survivor Series 1991, in one of the most heinous acts in the history of the WWF, Jake the Snake Roberts 
had another King Cobra with him in the ring. And it bit the Macho Man Randy Savage on his left bicep. And it was not devenomized. Jack Tunney had to act quickly because the Macho Man almost died after getting bit by the Cobra in his arm. Tunney did. And Tunney made a legendary decision. After consulting with the personal physician of the Macho Man, Randy Savage, I cannot in good conscience allow Randy Savage to participate in the Survivor Series. With the tragic events of this past weekend still fresh in all our minds, I accept full responsibility for allowing such a potentially dangerous reptile at ringside. I will accept Jake Roberts' explanation at face value that this was indeed an accident and that he had been led to believe that his King Cobra had indeed been devenomized by the lab. However, resting upon my shoulders is the welfare of everyone here in the World Wrestling Federation. Therefore, effective immediately, the King Cobra and all reptiles are barred from ringside. In addition, after careful consultation with the macho man Randy Savage and his doctor, it is my decision that he be reinstated immediately and that a match between Randy Savage and Jake Roberts be sanctioned at the earliest possible date, which will be this coming Tuesday night in Texas. Indeed it was at this Tuesday in Texas where the Macho Man overcame the odds and an eight-month layoff defeating Jake the Snake Roberts at this Tuesday in Texas only enhanced their rivalry a few more months with the actions that took place after that contest. But back to Jack Tunney being in ringside for the Hogan-Undertaker rematch. Six days after Survivor Series, Hulk Hogan retained the World Wrestling Federation Championship due to a, due to a handful of ashes into the eyes of the Undertaker from the Undertaker's own urn. Coincidentally, Ric Flair is also at ringside, went to chair shot. Hulk Hogan, Hogan ducked, hit Flair with the chair. Flair then falls into the body of Jack Tunney. Jack Tunney getting up, he wanted the fair outcome, somehow surviving. Tunney sees the ashes being thrown into the face of the Undertaker. One, two, three, Hulk Hogan, your World Wrestling Federation champion for the fourth time. Or is he? Absolutely not. Jack Tunney strips Hulk Hogan of the championship and puts the title on the line at the Royal Rumble 1992. Undertaker and Hogan have the have uh, the, the special drawing of numbers 20 through 30. Everyone else has to draw from the regular hat where the numbers are are drawn from for the Royal Rumble. Coincidentally, during this time. Jack Tunney also did some incredible actions with the Nature Boy. Ric Flair, Ric Flair coming in from WCW, holds in his hands the physical NWA World Heavyweight Championship, a.k.a. the Big Gold Belt. Jack Tunney, frustrated over Ric Flair's insistence on being the real world champion, Jack Tunney actually distorts the viewing on television of the NWA Championship. Flair... Annoyed as all hell, says, I'm going to go to the Royal Rumble and I'm going to win the World Wrestling Federation Championship. And indeed, Jack Tunney awards the World Wrestling Federation Championship at the end of the night to Ric Flair, who went from number three to the very end to be World Wrestling Federation Champion. The real world champion was live in Albany, New York at the Knickerbocker Arena. And became the World Wrestling Federation Champion. The real world champion. This all leads to WrestleMania 8. At the WrestleMania 8 press conference in Indianapolis, Indiana. Where our number one contender would be crowned. And ladies and gentlemen. Jack Tunney. Makes the official ruling. And it starts to make people wonder. Whether or not Hulk Hogan. Was always in the back pocket. Of Jack Tunney. Wait a minute, folks, I can hardly hear myself, please. I'm sure this man can answer some of the questions for you. I would like to introduce at this time the president. Questions later. Just give us a minute or two. The president of the World Wrestling Federation, the Honorable Jack Tunney. Mr. Tunney. 
Jack. Hold off on the questions, please. Thank you very much, Gene. With so many worthy challengers anxiously awaiting a shot at Ric Flair's World Wrestling Federation title, choosing an opponent has been especially difficult. At this table up here are five of the uh, challengers. Roddy Piper. The Undertaker. On my left, Sid Justice. Macho Man Randy ah. Savage. Ooh, yeah, right. Like it, like it. And Hulk Hogan. Very hard to choose one. However, after careful consideration, as well as examining the wishes of the public at large, I have reached a decision. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed members of the press, challenging Ric Flair for the World Wrestling Federation title at the Hoosier Dome at WrestleMania 8 will be Hulk Hogan! Yes! Yes, see! Hulkamaniac, I told you this thing would turn full circle, man. Now the battle lines are drawn. Ric Flair has the WWF title. The so-called real world champion is going to find out what the power of Hulkamania is all about in WrestleMania 8. And what you going to do, Ric Flair, when Hulk Hogan and his little maniacs run wild on you? Well, indeed, Jack Tunney names Hulk Hogan number one contender. However, Sid Justice, one of the contenders on the stage, pissed off, turned his back on Hogan. During a tag match on Saturday night's main event, Hogan actually forfeited his title shot given to him by Jack Tunney. My opinion, Hogan and Tunney had a personal connection due to the money they were both making running the WWF. Hogan as the wrestler, Tunney as the president. Therefore, Macho Man became the World Wrestling Federation champion, WrestleMania 8. Jack Tunney, that was a bit of a controversial t decision. Yes, it was. However... WrestleMania 9, and what could have been the biggest challenge to date for Hulkamania, Hulk Hogan won the World Wrestling Federation Championship from Yokozuna. After Yokozuna, three minutes before that, defeated Bret Hart for the championship. There was no legally binding contract. Fuji dared Hogan to take the challenge. Hogan took the bait and also took the championship. Jack Tunney had a tough decision to make. Was this an official title match at the end of WrestleMania 9, or was it not? Jack Tunney with the answer. After much deliberation over Mr. Fuji's protest on behalf of Yokozuna, it is my decision that there was an oral contract. Mr. Fuji issued a challenge, Hulk Hogan accepted. Furthermore, there was a WWF referee in the ring. Therefore, my decision is that Hulk Hogan remain World Wrestling Federation Champion. For all you Hulk Hogan conspirators, whenever Hogan lashed out at Jack Tunney on interviews in the, in the late 90s, in the early 90s, Jack Tunney and Hogan might very well have been in cahoots. Another example of that, Hogan is the champion after WrestleMania 9. There's a lot of people that also talk about how Jack Tunney's had a bunch of connections with all the popular wrestlers in the World Wrestling Federation. In particular, this one instance, in December of 1991, regarding the Royal Rumble. Jack Tunney, in the middle of WWF Superstars, called Rowdy Roddy Piper on air. And here is proof, it's very rarely heard or even known about, Jack Tunney and Roddy Piper having a phone conversation on the air during WWF Superstar, showing their friendship. Ah. Hello? Wait a minute, oh, this shot. is a, a telephone? You're expecting a call, wait a minute. Hello, the phone's ringing? Pick it up, pick it up. Hello, this is Jack Tunney, may I bother uh, Roddy Piper for a moment? Mr. Tunney, the... 
I, I suppose you can. This is Vince McMahon. We're on the air. Hi, Vince. How are you? I'm terrific. How about Great. yourself? Just fine, thank you. Yeah, a little controversy uh, surrounding you as of late. But wait a minute. You want to talk to Roddy? Yes, please. One moment. How about you? Thank you Telephone. very much. Mr. President Jack Tunney, this is Rowdy Roddy Piper. How are you today? Fine, thanks, Roddy. And good. how are you? Box of fluffy ducks, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, very good, very good. I called you, Roddy. You're the first one uh, that I've called. Yes. Uh, hoping you'll enter the uh, Royal Rumble. Well, Mr. President, I want you to know that it's an honor to speak with you and that it would be an honor to enter the Royal Rumble, and I want you to know right now in closing that I will make the absolute best WWF champion ever. Thank you very much, sir. Good luck to you, Ronnie. All right. My goodness, how about that? Mr. Perfect, your reaction. Come on, give me a break, Piper. Is that what it's going to take to get into the Royal Rumble? A call from President Jack Tunney? What are you trying to pull off here? I'd give you plenty of breaks if you were in the Royal Rumble, but you're not. And I Lord and Lord, here I come. Obviously, Jack Tunney and Roddy Roddy Piper have a long, illustrious history. However... Jack Tunney also has a long, illustrious history with wrestlers that don't abide by the rules, as you've heard in this previous Hall of Fame induction. Jack Tunney has been a, an, an esteemed president, as it may be. Shawn Michaels, World Wrestling Federation Intercontinental Champion. He was uh, not defending the belt as much as Jack Tunney would like on the house show circuit. Therefore, Jack Tunney, on an episode of Monday Night Raw, took things into his own hands. Championship defenses and his refusal to fulfill his contractual obligations, the World Wrestling Federation has no alternative but to suspend Mr. Michaels and thus vacate the Intercontinental Championship. As a result of these actions, next week a 20 man over the top rope battle royal will be held, in which the final two competitors will meet the following Monday to determine the new Intercontinental Champion. <laughs> Shawn Michaels, good old heartbreak kid. You don't want to defend the belt on the house shows? Suspended and stripped of your championship. Look, Jack Tunney's done a lot of big things. Again, he's, he's, he's done a lot of controversial things. He's, he's made a lot of controversial decisions. He's made a lot of interesting verdicts on certain title situations. However, his last real edict as president of the World Wrestling Federation revolved around WrestleMania 10. You see, at the Rumble 94, Lex Luger and Bret Hart were the final two combatants, and they eliminated each other at the Rumble. Thus, there were two winners of the Royal Rumble, Bret Hart and Lex Luger, who would be going to WrestleMania to face Yokozuna for the World Wrestling Federation Championship. Jack Tunney, the bastion of innovation, came up with one last edict regarding who would get a shot via the WrestleMania 10 coin toss. And Jack Tunney's last official decree as World Wrestling Federation president, he had this to say. As co-winners of the WWF Royal Rumble match, both Lex Luger and Bret Hart unquestionably deserve the opportunity to challenge the WWF champion at WrestleMania 10. Therefore, it is my decision that both superstars will indeed have their just opportunity. For the first time in WrestleMania history, the WWF title will be defended not once, but twice at the same event. And there could be no greater event than WrestleMania 10 at Madison Square Garden. Let me elaborate. This Monday night, there will be a coin toss to determine who will be the competitor to face Yokozuna. Assuming, of course, that Yokozuna is the champion at WrestleMania 10. If Lex Luger wins the coin toss, he will face Yokozuna, which means that Bret Hart would then face suitable competition. In this case, his brother, Owen Hart. After the Bret Hart-Owen Hart match, 
Brett then would face the winner of the Lex Luger Yokozuna match. However, if Bret Hart wins the coin toss this Monday night, then he will face Yokozuna, which means that Lex Luger would then also face suitable competition. In this case, Crush. After the Lex Luger Crush match, Lex Luger would then face the winner of the Bret Hart Yokozuna match. All three parties, Yokozuna, the current champion, Bret Hart, and Lex Luger, the current contenders, have agreed to this historic format, which will take place at WrestleMania 10. I believe, under the circumstances, this is a fair and equitable decision. Just one more thing. Unannounced guest referees, acceptable to all parties, will be assigned to the two championship matches at WrestleMania. Thank you. Ten years into his run as World Wrestling Federation president, Jack Tunney still found ways to make innovative decisions to, to enthuse the World Wrestling Federation fans. And unequivocally, oh, I still can't say that word. How did Tunney say it? Unequivocally. There you go. Unequivocally. He found ways to help profit the World Wrestling Federation to more money into their pockets and to help the wrestlers make the most bank possible with that major WrestleMania 10 announcement. Jack Tunney still found a way to make it happen. And then Tunney was never really heard from on television again. He made one final appearance on World Wrestling Federation television. At the 1994 King of the Ring, when Owen Hart was being coronated as the King of Hearts, he actually shooed away Jack Tunney from issuing him the crown to be King of the Ring. And that, my friends, is how Jack Tunney was last seen on World Wrestling Federation television. 1995, Jack Tunney uh, left the World Wrestling Federation, retired as they said on TV, but ultimately forced out of Canada, forced out of the Canadian WWF wrestling scene, and retired, coincidentally. Jack Tunney stayed out of the public eye for the final nine years of his life until he passed away in 2004 of a heart attack at the age of 68. Honestly, wrestling has not been the same from an authority figure standpoint since the days of Jack Tunney. You know, from the days of uh, Vince McMahon as the Vince McMahon as the man who's trying to screw wrestlers out of championship opportunities. Jack Tunney never did that. He was fair, he was impartial, and he was unbiased. And that's what's missing in pro wrestling, is what Jack Tunney brought to the table as president of the World Wrestling Federation. I am here to say Jack Tunney is a hero to men like me who believe being fair, impartial, and unbiased make for great authoritative leaders. It is my indeed my privilege to induct Jack Tunney into the Hardway HQ Hall of Fame. This has been so much fun to do. And uh, Jack Tunney, you are number one in the Hardway HQ Hall of Fame. And hopefully we get some eyes and ears on this shindig. Because it definitely is one of a kind. Jack Tunney, you were one of a kind. And I'm proud to say thank you for being a mentor. Thank you for being an inspirational figure on television. And thank you for being an authority figure to show kids breaking the rules does not pay. Now before we go, I have a treat for everybody. Uh, Stu Hart, you know all know Stu Hart if you're involved in the Hardway HQ podcasting series. Stu Hart has a special song for Jack Tunney's induction to the Hardway HQ Hall of Fame. And he wanted me to play this for you. So without further ado, Stu, take it away with your song for Jack Tunney. Hey, yeah. This is your boy, the STU. Stu. Hey, Jack, my fellow Canuck. This is for you, man. Doing the Hall of Fame. Where everybody will remember your name. This is for you. Here we go, man. I like your shoulders. 
Yeah, you can be the greatest. You can be the best. You can be the King Kong banging on your chest. You can beat the world. You can beat the world. You can throw the God go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up. You can beat the clock. You can move a mountain. You can break rocks. Some will call that practice. Some will call that luck. But either way, you're going to the history books. Then in the other thing. And the world's gonna know your name. Yeah, I like your shoulder, Debbie. Cause you're burning with the blood of slam. Like your name is Bruce, superhero Bruce. And the world's gonna know your name, Jack Tenney. And you'll be on the walls of the Hall of Fame. There's hard ways you even own any walls. Well, I'll throw oh, Jack. I'll throw you on the walls of uh, the Hard Way HQ headquarters and in the Hot House. Congrats. <laughs> like you showed us, you miserable Toronto bastard. Um, okay, <laughs> and that's where we're going to leave it out this week. Um, thank you to Jack Tunney for everything you've done for old school wrestling fans, old school WWF fans like myself. Um, you're now officially part of the Hardway HQ Hall of Fame. We'll set something up on the johnharder.com. We do have walls, Stu. We do have walls. Um, Jack Tunney, thank you for everything, and uh, I'm hoping people pick up on this as going on YouTube, as well as iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher, and lastly, the JohnHarder.com. Uh, thank you for checking out this Hardway HQ Hall of Fame induction. Hopefully, we'll do this again soon. I mean, we have one person. There's always should be number two. I'll think of somebody. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you for checking out the Hardway HQ Hall of Fame induction of former WWF president the distinguished and esteemed Jack Tunney. Unequivocally, this was awesome. <laughs> I don't even know if I used that in the right tone. Good grief.